This video is brought to you by Helix Sleep. Strange World, Disney Animation's 61st film. But few people would know that since this movie is getting shafted when it comes to marketing. At the time of recording this video, the film has earned around $19 million in its first five days at the domestic box office and is projected to lose at least $100 million during its theatrical run. That is bad. Hell, I think Strange World just might be the most devastating Thanksgiving release for a Disney animated film ever. Oh, wait, hold on. No, um, unfortunately, that title goes to Treasure Planet. Sadly, I think that both of these films share a lot in common when it comes to Disney's marketing. I actually ran two polls both on my YouTube channel and on my Twitter to see how many folks actually saw substantial ads for Strange Worlds, and an overwhelming majority of people said that they did not. On top of its weak marketing, Strange World is getting smacked around by critics and is receiving unusually low scores for a Disney animated film, but for a variety of reasons. And one of those reasons being, spoiler alert, you good? Here we go. This film prominently features a gay character. Okay, I know, I know, hold up. We've been down this road before with Disney, and I think it's safe to say that many of us are getting sick of this sensationalized headline. First, it was LeFou from the live-action Beauty and the Beast remake, and then it was the Cyclops officer from Onward, and then it was the character from Lightyear whose name I cannot recall because that movie was not very memorable to me. Same song, same dance, same headline for online journalists to tout around, but I'll be damned. Strange World actually delivered in a way where said gay character could not be conveniently cut out of the film. Usually Disney tries to have its cake and eat it, with international audiences like China, Russia, Africa, and the Middle East. Countries whose governments shoot down gay representation in movies, both domestic and imported. I like the part in Bohemian Rhapsody where Freddie Mercury isn't gay. <laughs> Just a guy and his friends, you know. Guys being dudes, simple as that. Of course we're a couple. A couple of guys. <laughs> Needless to say, Disney just skipped a bunch of international audiences with Strange World. But doing the same with domestic audiences? That's surprising. And it makes me question their faith in the film. Are they afraid of backlash from audiences who are seeing Strange World? I mean, I checked out the audience reviews on Rotten Tomatoes, and I saw exactly what I expected. Another woke offering from Disney. Save your money. Disney has lost its ability to tell a story. I miss the days of Toy Story and Up. Yeah, um, both of those films were done by Pixar. And of course, I'm all for people to love who they love. But I'll raise my kids on my terms. Relationship conversations between same sex is too soon to discuss with kids in lower grades. The situation in the kids movie will confuse kids and cause parents to have an uncomfortable and not ready for conversation. I walked my kids out midway. There should have been a disclaimer the movie contains sexual content. Eh, vote with your wallet, I guess. But let's not forget that The Little Mermaid, a beloved Disney classic and a film that arguably launched the Disney Renaissance, featured a 16-year-old girl who is naked, goo-goo-eyed over an older guy she just met and can't even talk to, and married said guy in like, what, a month, if even that? But yeah, Strange World is the one being sexual here, even though there's like no kissing whatsoever. In addition to the rough marketing, both domestic and abroad, Disney is still suffering the aftermath of COVID, balancing Disney Plus along with theatrical releases, and just recently kicked out its own CEO, Bob Chapek, and brought back its previous CEO, Bob Iger, to at least run things for like a year or two. What a whirlwind of developments. And I haven't even talked about the film itself yet. Call me crazy, but I like when movies are, you know, good. Regardless of poor marketing, corporate drama, or public backlash, is Strange World deserving of low scores based on its own merit? Or is it getting raked across the coals by Disney? All I can say is, I cannot wait for Del Toro's Pinocchio. Yes, it, it's almost here. Oh, no, not that one. Not the Pinocchio one from Disney. Oh, that, that was awful. Man, this really has been a terrible year for Disney, hasn't it? Strange World, directed by Don Hall and written by Gui Gwen, is about the world of Avalonia, 
and how a family of explorers, most notably Jaeger Clade, are trying to climb over mountains and see new worlds. Jaeger, a bombastic and daring adventurer, has a son named Searcher, who isn't quite the same as his dad. Searcher isn't as bold or loud as his father, and prefers to study the land rather than tame it. On one particular quest, Searcher discovers these plants called Pando that give off energy and said that the plants could revolutionize their people. His father said, hey, screw you, nerd, and continued on with his quest. Fast forward 25 years, and Searcher is a farmer, a father, a husband, and the savior of Avalonia for his discovery that now powers the entire civilization. But alas, conflict. The plant is dying in mass, and a team sets off underground to discover why. Along for the journey is Searcher's wife, Meridian, and his son, Ethan. Ethan has a few hallmarks of your typical teenage character. Embarrassed by his parents, wants to hang out with his friends, has a nervous crush, but is overall a good guy who yearns for more than just a life of farming. Now, it's safe to say that Searcher does not want to be his father when it comes to his own son, and tries to be this unconditionally loving father who supports and communicates with his own son. Though deep down inside, he fears that his son will become his father. On the journey, the team finds themselves in a world that is alien and alive with creatures of all shapes and sizes. For the viewers out there who enjoy speculative evolution, like all tomorrows, I think you'll enjoy the creatures of this film. So, it turns out that Searcher's dad is alive and has been lost in this world for like 25 years. As the story progresses, we see the ups and downs of Searcher and Jaeger trying to see eye to eye, Ethan getting caught up in their drama and how the world itself is actually alive that they've been living in and on a giant turtle this entire time, and that the plant is killing said creature. At the end, the group makes the decision to kill the plant and free the creature, that the perceived legacy of both Jaeger and Searcher are not worth torching their own father-son relationship over, and the same can be said for Ethan. So that is the plot more or less. Oh, also there's a dog. He's got three legs. Off the bat, Strange World suffers from the Kung Fu Panda Syndrome, i.e. it starts in a really cool, unique visual style, only to immediately abandon it for the traditional expected children's 3D aesthetic. The movie is clearly inspired by old-school pulp comic books, and the beginning exposition animates in that style. Like, I kind of wish they just stuck with that. That would have been really unique, but oh well. Now, the animation that we do get is not bad, but it's obvious that they are playing it safe. Personally, I'm not crazy about the designs of the characters. There's just something about them that doesn't strike me as very memorable. But again, they get the job done. And the same can be said for the voice acting too. Serviceable performances that champions Hollywood's continued preference for A-listers when it comes to voice acting. Jake Gyllenhaal, Lucy Liu, and Dennis Quaid to name a few. Nothing exceptional, but again, it gets the job done. Now, the overall message of the movie is pretty heavy-handed, but painfully relevant. Living in symbiosis with our environment, rather than trying to conquer it. There's a scene in particular that features a card game that includes the three generations of clades, Jaeger, Searcher, and Ethan. How Ethan is trying to say that the objective of the game is to live in harmony with the environment. But both Jaeger and Searcher ignore the rules, and instead want to conquer or farm the land very much so an obvious allegory for the movie's plot, and to viewers watching. The other themes of family, forging your own identity, and relationships between generations is admittedly getting a bit old with recent Disney films. For Strange World, it's not a bad conflict, but Disney, a company that built its reputation on the backs of spectacular villains, seems completely averse to calling anyone or anything a bad guy anymore. Which is a real shame, too, because classic villains like Jafar, Scar, Ursula, and Hades are really fun. Yeah, they're cartoonish caricatures, but that's part of the charm. And it's a huge part of what made the Disney Renaissance so successful to begin with. Each one of these villains was a different trope, a different exaggeration of a negative trait, so they all felt fresh and interesting, even if they all narratively served the same purpose. But for Disney's recent films, the same repetitive conflict of generational miscommunication doesn't have the same breadth of variety, so it starts to feel a lot more samey. Strange World, Ralph Wrecks the Internet, Frozen 2, Moana, Raya, they all refuse to portray a clear villain, and so all resolve in essentially the same way. Come on, Disney! Bring back villains! Or the Kingdom Hearts franchise is going to fail! They need more bosses! They're gonna run out! 
Are they gonna fight Edgar from the Aristocats? I actually hope so, that'd be really funny. And then it actually happened. Gay representation in a substantial way in a Disney animated film. Surprising, considering that Disney has been so adverse to even hinting at those kinds of things, since it kills a film's chance in foreign markets, which is probably why they have basically shoved this film under the rug and washed their hands of it. Anytime a modern Disney property gets a little too progressive, they waste no time scuttling it. I mean, just look what happened to the Owl House. No doubt, Disney really is in full passive progressive mode, with the lack of marketing for this film. And I have to wonder if the negative audience reaction is due to the gay character in a main role. Even mild representation and Lightyear cause massive backlash. So, while Disney essentially abandoning this movie means it isn't making headlines from prominent reactionary figureheads, perhaps the normal people that are going to see it with more conservative mindsets are pushing back in their own way via the tomato meter. Which really is a shame too, because there is a solid film here. My buddy Tom and I went in with low expectations because of the low audience score. But in this case, we feel that the critic rating of around 75% seems right on the money. While Strange World isn't a modern Disney classic, it's definitely a competently made film that's well animated, well acted, and well paced. It is a totally serviceable 90 minutes and is an entertaining watch. Now, the concept itself doesn't really make all that much sense if you stop to think about it. What is basically a plant in the beginning of the movie turns out to be a parasite of some sort. And despite growing this plant on a farm, it somehow all links back to the soil as a single organism to the threat of the creature they live on. Even though the soil is assumedly actual soil and land and like not part of the massive creature, right? Like that's just land they live on that ended up on top of the creature itself, right? Because if not, how did the humans evolve in a completely closed off ecosystem and not in a different kind of life similar to the interior of the creature? Yeah, see, there's a lot that the movie kind of glosses over, and it assumes that you will too. And you know what? That's fine. Again, this is a concept ripped straight out of the pages of a pulp sci-fi comic. So with that framing, it totally works. They should have leaned in that aesthetic more to keep you in that mindset. So overall, Strange World is a decent film that seems to have been buried by Disney, and it's not really resonating with audiences who have seen the film. Now, it's entirely possible that this is due to Disney being over leveraged with its marketing budget and wanting to advertise for Wakanda or Avatar 2 instead. But also at the same time, it is very possible that they want to keep this movie hush-hush because they want to avoid backlash from viewers. But if that is the case, then why make the movie to begin with? I applaud those involved who went up to bat in a sincere way for Ethan. But the almighty dollar is usually the final decider when it comes to Disney and its decision making. I'm not going to hold my breath that they will stay this course when there's international money to be made. But I would love to be wrong. Disney growing a backbone? Well, stranger things have happened. Or more like stranger worlds, am I right? <laughs> Cringe. Uh, but if stranger world is getting the treasure planet treatment and is being purposely sabotaged, then that is concerning. And it's also a bad precedent for Disney films moving forward. I think we'll get a full idea of the situation once Strange World is available on Disney+. Plus. And Kanta did not pick up steam until it arrived on Plus. So who can say? That might happen for Stranger World. Is it a sleeper hit? Or is it just a sleeper? So those are my overall thoughts about Strange World. Hey, what do y'all think about it? Tell me down below in the comments and I'll see you all next time. So a big shout out to this video sponsor, Helix Sleep. I've had my bed from Helix for like two years now and my uh, rest just improves. It just keeps getting better. Getting some of the best sleep of my life. You know, what, what I do is I, I walk in at night, look at the bed, I'm like, oh, hey you, I'm gonna pump on top of you. P-O-M-F, pump, that's the sound I make when I hit the bed. Pfft. That's a different sound, actually. I make both sounds. So for those who don't know, Helix Sleep makes premium mattresses and bedding that are customized to fit your needs and conveniently shipped right to your door. It all starts with the Helix Sleep Quiz. Everybody's different, and Helix knows that. So they made a sleep quiz that matches your unique body type and sleep preferences to the perfect mattress for you. Do you sleep on your side, on your tummy, on your back, uh, on the ceiling? Uh, oh, we're gonna find some vampires in here. For me, I sleep on my side. Do you want your mattress to be soft or firm? 
I also like a mattress that is like firm, but not like too firm, so kind of soft. A hybrid, if you will. Also, I wanted a bed that was big enough for me and all the pets of my house. Because like I want to stretch out and the kitty, she sits on the corner. Uh, yeah, just you know how it goes. Based on those preferences, the quiz suggested the Midnight Helix Lux in queen size. And folks, I love it. It's been a perfect fit since day one. And for those of you who share a bed with a partner, see now you're just bragging, you can have them take the quiz alongside you, so both of you can find that perfect compromise. Also, like I said earlier, the mattress is shipped right to your front door, with free shipping in the US. It's rolled up in a box and is very easy to set up. Unless you're me, because I'm dumb, and I opened the box <laughs> in a room that couldn't facilitate it, so I got pinned against the wall. This isn't part of the plan. Maybe I like to be pinned against the wall. Oh my god, should we put that in the video, Jesse? I don't know. Maybe. And if you're hesitant about buying a Helix you haven't been able to try, no worries. There's a 100 night sleep trial, so you have over three months to try out your selection and make sure that you love it. If you don't, Helix will pick up the mattress and you'll get a full refund. Helix also has a 10 year warranty. And they also offer financing options and flexible payment plans. So a great night of sleep is never far away. So I absolutely recommend Helix Sleep. I love my Helix, and I think you will too. If you're looking for a new bed, check out Helix. Click the link down below or go to helixsleep.com slash saberspark and get up to $200 off your Helix mattress plus two pillows for free.